Cinderella. Many, many years ago, there lived a very sweet and pretty girl whose name was Lucinda. She lived in a fine, big house with her mother and father, and they were very happy. One sad day her mother died and, soon afterwards, her father married a very wealthy woman. This woman had two daughters, Bertha and Brenda, who were very similar to their mother both in looks and character. Lucinda felt certain at first that she would be happy with her new sisters to keep her company. But how mistaken she was. They were horrible girls, mean and cruel to her, calling her names and making her do all the hard work. When her work was finished for the day, little Lucinda would rest by the hearth, and gaze sadly at the fire. Her stepsisters, noticing this, named her Cinderella. The poor girl slept in an attic on an old straw mattress, while her stepsisters occupied the most elegantly decorated rooms, lined with mirrors. There they would sit, preening and admiring themselves in front of the mirrors, for because they had very fine clothes they imagined that they were beautiful. In fact, they were ugly and horrible, both in looks and nature. Cinderella, in spite of her tattered clothes, was infinitely more beautiful, but seeing this made them more jealous and they treated her like a slave. One day, the king's son held a great ball, to which he invited the most important people in the kingdom. Cinderella's stepmother heard of the ball and was delighted, for she cherished great hopes that the prince might marry one of her daughters. The stepsisters immediately started choosing the dresses which they would wear to make a good impression on the prince. Cinderella was forced to work harder than ever. She was buttoning up buttons, zipping up zips, hooking hooks and tying sashes all that day. At last the time came for them to go to the ball. Cinderella gazed wistfully at the carriage until it disappeared from view at the end of the road. Left all by herself, Cinderella began to cry. She sat by the kitchen fire, and tears dripped down on her work-worn hands as they lay on her torn brown dress. Why, oh why, can't I go to the ball? She murmured to herself sadly. All of a sudden, a brilliant white light shone in the darkness. A gentle, kindly voice said, Cinderella, my dear, why are you crying? Cinderella looked up, startled. And there, standing right beside her, was the loveliest fairy, dressed in silver and holding a wand in her hand. Cinderella sobbed bitterly. Oh, I do want to go to the ball given by the prince, she said brokenly. Then you shall go to the ball, said the fairy. I am your fairy godmother, and if you do exactly as I say, you'll be at the party in a twinkling. Now, dry your eyes and listen to me carefully. First, you must go into the garden and bring me the biggest pumpkin you can find. Place it outside the door of the house. Cinderella did as she was told, although she couldn't understand how a pumpkin could help her to go to the royal ball. However, the fairy raised her wand over the pumpkin and, suddenly, the pumpkin had disappeared and in its place was the most magnificent golden carriage. Now you must get me a mouse trap, said the fairy. Cinderella went away and came back with one which had seven white mice inside it. As soon as the fairy touched them with her wand, they turned into seven beautiful white horses. And now, said the fairy, bring me a rooster and six little chickens. When Cinderella had done this, the fairy waved her magic wand again. Zing! The rooster became a jolly coachman and the chickens were turned into six servants. There you are, said the fairy godmother. Now you can go to the ball. Does that make you happy? Happy! Cinderella cried. I have never been so happy in my whole life. But then she remembered her clothes, and looked down sadly at her torn, brown dress. I won't be able to go in this, she said. But the fairy waved her magic wand again. Gone were her ragged clothes, Cinderella was now clad in a gown of shining satin, glittering all over with diamonds, and on her feet were dainty dance slippers made of glass. The fairy godmother opened the coach door. Have a wonderful time, she said. But remember this. You must leave the dance before midnight. If you don't, your coach will turn back into a pumpkin, your coachman into a rooster, your fine white horses will become mice again, your servants will be chickens, and your glittering gown will be an old brown rag. Promising to remember the fairy's instructions, Cinderella drove off to the ball. 
When she entered the ballroom, everybody stopped dancing and talking, they could not take their eyes off her, she looked so lovely. The prince, dazzled by her beauty, asked her to dance. From then on he danced every dance with her, and stayed with her all evening. Cinderella was so happy she forgot the fairy's warning. When midnight chimed, she suddenly remembered and ran out of the ballroom as fast as she could. The prince followed her down the stairs but could not catch up with her. However, he managed to pick up one of her shoes that had fallen off as she ran. The next day Cinderella heard her stepsisters talking about the ball. She heard them say that the prince was anxious to find a beautiful young lady with whom he had danced all evening, but who had disappeared on the stroke of twelve. Cinderella learnt that the prince had one of her shoes, and that he was going to search the whole kingdom to find the girl whose foot the shoe fitted. And, having found her, he would marry her. Through all the land the prince searched for his lost princess. But though many came forward claiming to be the princess, each claim was recognized as false by the unhappy prince. All day long street criers went through every town in the kingdom, asking that the favored girl come forward and grant the prince's dearest wish. Cinderella was very unhappy, for she dearly wanted to say that she was the one they were searching for, but she could not. For who would believe that this ragged servant girl had been, for one night, the dream bride of a prince? In a silent palace the prince sat, hour after hour, wearily gazing at the tiny slipper, his only remembrance of the girl he loved. One day he instructed his servants to go into every house in the land and find the young lady whom the slipper fitted. This was done. The slipper was passed round but would fit nobody. At last the page arrived at Cinderella's house. Cinderella watched as her excited stepsisters prepared to try on the slipper. They puffed and struggled but try as they would, they couldn't get it to fit. Now you must try it on, the page said to Cinderella. Cinderella's stepsisters scoffed maliciously. It won't fit you, they said nastily. But it fitted perfectly. Cinderella's stepsisters were astonished. Cinderella forgave them for the cruel way they had treated her, before she was driven away in the royal carriage. As she entered the palace a wonderful thing happened. Her fairy godmother appeared. She looked more beautiful than ever, and she smiled at Cinderella, who was the only person who could see her. Then she waved her magic wand and in the twinkling of an eye Cinderella was completely transformed. Gone were her rags, and now she was dressed again in her beautiful ballroom gown. The prince was overjoyed to see her and ran to take her by the hand. Cinderella and her prince were married, and, thanks to the fairy godmother, they lived happily together. The end.